Oh, sugar honey ice tea. It's the EAC show. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Cologne, and welcome to the EAC show. Coming to you from sunny South Florida. I got Marcus Mack on the sound. Yo, yo. Got Joey Benetti on the video. Yes, sir. EJ's not with us today. And I got the big one sitting next to me, UCF activist, overall sports enthusiast, the big one, Cameron Denny. Cameron, what's going on, man? Not much, man. How we doing, Emilio? Good, good, good. A lot to talk about today. Let's get into it real quick, and let's tell them what's on the, what's on the show today. Yeah, actually, a lot to talk about for, for at least a Wednesday here. We're going to talk uh, about NBA. We'll go over last night's game. Uh, games, excuse me. We'll discuss the scores, uh, but we'll only be really discussing the two games on TNT. Which right, believe, right, right. Which were those again? The, the game. The first game was the Toronto Raptors versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Yep, and then the second game was the Lakers versus the New Orleans Pelicans, which is basically just Mount Zion and and right, right. Brandon Ingram. Right. Oh, just just real quick, just to let you guys know, we're trying something new. We're actually live streaming right now on Twitch on Joey Benetti's uh, channel. So we're trying to test this out. And eventually, we're gonna probably end up starting an EAC show on Twitch, so you guys could check that out. And don't forget to subscribe on all podcast platforms. Click, comment, like, hit the notification button on YouTube so you guys can stay up to date with all the uh, new episodes. Yeah, we'll also talk about uh, the NCAA college basketball, um, just about the new emerging projections for the seeding. Uh, saw a Duke loss. Again, I know. And that's the second loss in a row to unranked teams. We'll, I don't get, want, we'll save that comment. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, and we'll also talk about uh, the XFL, of course. Our uh, bread and butter right that, now. That's it, right? Our bread and butter. Uh, so we'll, we'll discuss, obviously, our week four picks, uh, what we're looking for in each matchup, um, where you can find those those games. Oh, uh, but between that, we're going to do EAC headlines. Yes, we got EAC headlines. we got EAC headlines where we're trying out a new segment on Wednesdays. We're going to do EAC headlines yep. where we, uh, we have Marcus Smack throw out headlines to us and Cam... Or myself, then tackle that specific headline. Yeah, just anything recent from the last day or two since we were last uh, here doing a show. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, the games last night. Uh, it was a, it was too, a decent right. NBA slate. Correct. It wasn't too exciting, but you, you know, you had a few things going on. Uh, the Hornets played at Pacers. The Pacers won 119 to 80. Uh, the Buccaneers, excuse me, the Buccaneers, the <laughs> Milwaukee Bucks played at uh, Toronto Raptors. The Bucks won 108 to 97. That's a game we'll be discussing. That was the first game uh, on TNT's primetime slate. Uh, the third game, to, uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder versus the Bulls. The Thunder won 124 to 122. Close game. Then the Pistons played the Nuggets. Pistons won 115 to 98. Pelicans versus Lakers, that second game on the primetime and TNT slate that we'll speak on. The Celtics played the Trailblazers. The Celtics won 118 to 106. Uh, and then out in the West Coast, the Kings played the Warriors, the lowly trash Warriors. God bless them. They lost 94 to 112. Sacramento took the game there. So let's get into the first game, the first game that was on TNT, the primetime game, which was the Milwaukee Bucks, the 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 to, they, they, they need all, they, they're ridiculous. They need more respect. But the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Toronto Raptors. The game was in Toronto. It was retro night at in in a Social Bank Arena, and Drake came out full fledged <laughs> trolling the Milwaukee Bucks. WWE belts all over the place. This, that, and the third. Blah 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 blah. Yo, he's a he's a great super fan. Yeah, he's great. I have nothing there. wrong with what he did last night. Great super fan. But Milwaukee just put the beats on them. Like, it just, they're just too good. They do what they continue to do is just win. They they're just, just shut you up. They're just too good. I mean, hats off to, you know, the supporters out there, the other super fan that they have, too. I forgot the Indian guy's name. Oh, the guy with the turban that yeah, sits the on the court the turban, side? Yeah, the guy with the turban. him. Like, you know, I, I, I love that because they do it for their team. You understand? Right. The trolling is for the other team against the other team because it's Toronto versus everybody, which is understandable. Yeah, we and the North. Yeah, and that's the type of fan base that you want, that loyalty. But that's like literally having like the Bulls come in. Now, you don't choose that game right, to troll. Right, right. right. Milwaukee's <laughs> too good. Yeah, yeah. You pick a middle of the pack, four or five seed in the East team. Uh, I respect them. I mean, they're very proud. They're a very proud um, team. They love their Maple Leafs. Uh, they and they, they love their Raptors, especially after winning the ship last year. So uh, I can respect it. They put on the belt because they're the defending champions of the NBA. I get it, but you're right. You, not to this. Not to this team, dude. They won by 11, and John has played only 
38 minutes. He had 19 points. It wasn't anything serious. Yeah, 19 points, 19 rebounds, 8 assists, and 4 blocks. He, he had a chilling game. It wasn't even like... Yeah, it, he, it wasn't his normal 30, triple-double, whatever. It was just like a chillax game that he had it's yesterday. Starting, it's starting to just become just like the norm. I mean, they have uh, Middleton as well, uh, Bledsoe. They have such a nice little team. Which, Hill. Yeah, I mean, which which honestly, it brings me Pat Connaughton, who we talked about in the dunk contest uh, a week or two back, which brings me ultimately to the point I wanted to make to you tonight, Emilio. Are, are they the best team ever in the NBA? Oh, that's still to be determined. I mean, but they're there. They're there. They're close. I mean, their level of consistency is just it's, it's, it's on another stratosphere. Yeah. They're really that good in basketball. If you're a basketball purist and you enjoy basketball, you are enjoying watching the Milwaukee Bucks. Are they the most exciting? No, but they play the game the right way. They, they win games. They're efficient. They share the ball. There's no truckers on the team. There's no ball hogs. Right. They pass the ball around and everybody gets involved. I mean, they got backup point guard. He's probably the third point guard. DiVincenzo. Vincenzo. Oh yeah, from Villanova. And he's playing. Like yeah. he's involved. He's playing. You got him, Hill, you got Bledsoe. They're they're actively playing in the game and, and you know what? They're doing a great job, literally. Seriously. Yeah, it's like your grandfather's team. It's how you want to watch basketball. And uh, honestly, yeah, the way you said they're doing it the right way, it's not just Giannis. Everyone thinks the game no. seems just excelling. Look at how many Giannis. names we're naming. We're naming Hill. Right. We're naming Matthews. We're naming DiFincendo. Both Lopez brothers. Middleton. Middleton. Uh, 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 Giannis. Like, you know, Giannis's brother doesn't even get to see the court. Like, yeah. just because of how many players are actively involved in playing, it's really good. Oh, the new guy that they traded for, uh, they got on waivers or whatever. Williams. Remember oh. he was playing in, uh, I think it was in Charlotte? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't you, I didn't see too much. Yeah, about that, he's he's playing too. I mean, it just goes. Marvin to say, Williams. They have they have a full roster and a team that that's that deep like that with a player like Giannis. I mean, everyone's picking them for a reason. Uh, yeah, at, we at got come out we of got a East. preview of. In my opinion, we got a preview of the Eastern Conference Finals last night. I agree. Yeah, and, and it's pretty crazy to say because I I just wanted to to throw that out there that they may be the best team ever in the NBA because I might not be crazy. I, I feel like I'm not crazy saying that they're fifty and eight. And they beat the second team in their conference by 11 on the road. I mean, we should start at least having that conversation. They're, they're fully focused. They're, yeah. they're, they're intensely focused. They, on a they're literally playing basketball on Adderall. That's what they're yeah. doing. They're playing <laughs> basketball on – they're playing basketball on Adderall. They're just, they're just focused. And they're having fun doing it. All the WWE – you know, references before the game, playing around, beating each other up and stuff. Like, and Drake tried to troll them, but it just didn't work. Didn't work. And when I'm on Adderall, I clean my room. When they're on Adderall, they go 50-8 and eight for the season through the first 58 I mean, it's games. It's crazy. It's really, really crazy. I mean, I enjoyed the game last night. It was really good. It was it was fun basketball to watch. It was a little back and forth there and there. A little testiness between Lowry and Hill and fouls mm-hmm. being called and what fouls weren't being called or whatever it may be. I saw Nick Nurse got a technical foul because he felt like <laughs> the technical foul that Brooke Lopez got wasn't fair. So he got one to even it out. Like, you know, but it, it, was, it was enjoyable basketball. And the crazy part about it, it wasn't even the best game of the night. Right. Agreed. It wasn't even the best game of the night. The best game of the night happened late on the West Coast. Am I right? Because we got King James versus Prince Zion. Mount Zion. <laughs> oh, man. That lived up to all the expectations. I mean, even though the Lakers were completely and utterly in control of the game, the majority of the game, um, it, it was everything we wanted to see. I mean, Zion didn't back down from AD, LeBron, or whoever else was on the court. And um, it was good basketball last night. It was good basketball. And, again, the score of that game was it was in L.A. The score was 118 to 109. Uh, so a nine-point victory for the Lakers. couple highlights of that. Uh, LeBron James had a great night. 40 points, eight rebounds, but when six does he? six. When doesn't he? Yeah, I know that. But Could uh, you imagine if he could make free throws? Yeah. <laughs> if he could make free throws, like it would be undoubtedly that he's probably the best player in the history of the game. If he could make free throws. Yeah. Yeah, it's something he struggled with, at least in the last uh, few years, which I'm curious because he didn't really have that issue in Miami. But um, Zion, just coming off of what you said, you were talking about Zion, 29 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists. The guy that I want to point out is, and I know it was all Zion versus LeBron. They tried to, Bleacher Report put out a a post trying to hype this up and the big matchup. That's why I was on TNT. Remember, uh, the Pelicans have a losing record right now. The game was on TNT because... Of Zion versus LeBron, they could easily put on that Blazers. I mean, they still have a Blazers. chance to make the playoffs, don't they? They still they have- do. They have an outside chance to make the playoffs. They could get the seventh or eighth seed. Uh, I think they've gone 
eight and four or nine and four in their last uh, eleven or twelve games. So they've been on a tear since Zion has been healthy. But uh, the guy I want to mention that you no- noted in the beginning of the game was Brandon Ingram. Oh yeah, man. I mean, look to 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 see the present in LeBron James and AD, who are just straight phenom players, and to see the future in Brandon Ingram and Zion is crazy. It's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's a little lackluster that it could it, it should be. Zion Ingram and Lonzo Ball. Yeah. But Lonzo Ball is just, in my opinion, Lonzo Ball is just playing regular. Like you could get what he's doing, you could get out of anybody. Yeah, he's just a whatever facilitator facilitator. It almost you almost forget that Zoe's on that team. Yeah. When you think about Zion and Brandon Ingram. Yeah, it's like what like what this is the second overall pick in the draft yeah. for the Los Angeles Lakers. Showtime was supposed to come back. You ended up getting shipped out for an understandably really, really good player. But you're not producing what people expect you to produce. Like Ingram, great game. Yeah. Zion hasn't had a bad game since he played. Right. And then everybody keeps talking about his weight. And how, hey, if he if he's actually fit, he'll probably score even more points. Like yeah. he'll go through the roof. But Ball's lackluster performances lately have me worried that he's not that guy. Yeah, he hasn't met up to the hype. I mean, just just exactly what you said. Uh, and if they want to be that that team that can make some noise uh, and, and disrupt some things in the Western Conference, they need a facilitator that can do more than what he's doing right now. Yeah, they can't they can't just sit on the backs of Brandon Ingram. Even though Brandon Ingram last night had thirty four points, seven rebounds, four assists. I have always said this, just jumping off topic here, but. When there was a draft four years ago, I think Ingram, Ingram came into the league in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I thought he was going to be the better prospect than Ben Simmons. Remember, Simmons went at one, Brandon Ingram went at two. Okay. So I always thought, and, and since then, you had Ingram every year progress. I think he averaged just under 10 points a game in his first year, then 14 points in his sophomore year, then 16 points last year, and now he's averaging over 25 points a game and over seven rebounds a game. He's having the most quiet because year, because like, he's doing it in New Orleans. Right, correct. He's doing it in New Orleans, and and if you do it in New Orleans, you can't be Brandon Ingram. If you do it in New Orleans, you have to be Zion Williamson. Like yeah. your name has to be that big, you know. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, Brandon Ingram right now is kind of similar to how Tim Duncan's efficiency was underrated. Like he'll go out there, he'll put up a really good game, but no one will really talk about it. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like in that time, Duncan was known as the big fundamentalist, a fundamental. Big funds, yeah. Yeah, big fund. But you spoke more about Kevin Garnett than you spoke about Tim Duncan. Yeah. So he's got. So he's got. Brandon Ingram's got uh, Tim Duncan swagger, but the playing ability of like a Kevin Durant with his long body oh, yeah, shooting ability. Absolutely, without question. I mean, they're going to be really good in the future. I hope Lonzo can just pick it up and be that third person to help them out. But if not, the Pelicans going to have to find somebody else to do it because they have two pieces. They need that third piece. Right, correct. They need that third player, you yeah, know? agreed. And uh, um, LeBron is just LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron continues. I mean, it, it was kind of funny to see. You can tell LeBron kicked it up last night because he had a feeling of old school versus new school. I still need to show my dominance, that I still need to show that I'm still the guy in the league. What's uh, homie's name? Did he posterize? Uh, what's his first name? I know his last name is Hart. He, Josh, not Josh. It's Hart. Josh Hart. It's Josh Hart. Oh my so. God, he posterized the hell out of him, yo. <laughs> oh my God, he teabagged him. <laughs> he te- teabagged him. I gotta see. Maybe we can post that on. Oh IG my if God, we find he teabagged him. They've been talking about it all day. Like it just, he rose above him and just told him take a whiff. Yeah, <laughs> that's all he did. Yeah, he can still get up at whatever age he's at. What is he? Thirty five at least now. Yeah, but um, NBA, NBA on TNT did a really good job of making sure that they put. Zion on prime time because we need to see Zion as much as possible. Everybody wants to tune in. Right. I mean, damn, this kid has been on every Sports Illustrated or magazine cover since he's been in high school. You know, he, the hype is there. You know, and yesterday he didn't seem like a deer in headlights. He mm. seemed like he was built for the bright lights. Brung it to AD and Dwight Howard and whoever was guarding Javel McGee or whatever. Yeah, he looked like a three-year player. Yeah, he looked like you know on both sides of the ball too. It wasn't like he was you know exposed on the defensive side too. He's He's just a monster on that side of the ball as he is on the other side of the ball. You're right, and I do appreciate that they're putting uh, the Pelicans games because you don't you don't get a lot of Pelican games on TV. So if they're going to go to L.A. and play them, uh, you know, 
let's put the game on TV. So I did appreciate that. I did catch the first half because the second half started at what, like one o'clock Eastern <laughs> Standard Time. Uh, so, but I did enjoy the game and. Not to sw- switch complete subjects here, but they just showed a highlight. Me and Amelia are watching this TV right now of the Wiz- of the Wizards game. Did you see Bradley Beal and what he's done the last couple nights? Oh yeah, he's been balling like crazy. I mean, it's tough because when 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 Bradley wanted to sign with uh, Washington, it was because he knows John Wall is going to be there and he's yeah. going to have some help. They're close. But, and no, actually, right now that's not it. You know, he's just. It's just Bradley doing his thing, dropping fifty and getting the L's. Like, yeah, he dropped fifty five, uh, I believe, you know, like a week ago, and then a few days ago dropped fifty three, just back to back games. And he came out and he said, I think yesterday, uh, he's like, to be honest with you, I'm a winner. So he's like, you can scratch those fifty point games. Means They're, nothing. Yeah, they mean nothing to me. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of, that's what you kind of want to hear. Last year before he re-signed with the Wizards, I know I'm going to sound like a heat homer here, but. He was in talks with the with Miami. Everyone before we got Jimmy Butler, you're we thought we were going to get Bradley. You're, you're such a homer. I am. <laughs> I am you're that, such a homer. But there is truth to that. Like we were all in on Bradley Beal, and they wanted a package deal for us to also get John Wall, and that would have meant we had to give up Bam out of Bayou. And Pat, Pat's like, "Nah, we're not doing that." Yeah. So um, you know, hopefully he can he can figure it out. Get shipped off to a different team. If not, maybe they'll try to build around him. But. That's it. But the NBA does a great job of marketing their key players. They did a great job last night of marketing that key game, and it didn't it didn't disappoint. It no didn't doubt. disappoint, even though the Lakers handled it handled. There was a lot of excitement in the game. You know, the back and forth, the dunks, the this, that, and third. So the NBA did a great job of making sure they had the Lakers versus Pelicans, Zion versus LeBron. No doubt. Uh, so we'll jump now. We'll talk about uh, NCAA college basketball before March Madness starts here. March the starts. The Dukies again, man. The Dukies. It's I crazy, can't believe huh? Duke, man. You're Duke. How do you lose to Wake Forest? I don't know. Uh, and honestly, in the ACC this year is sort of not what it used to be. Obviously, we talked about North Carolina a couple weeks back. They have a losing record for the first time in like 80-something years. Uh, so... Th- as a whole, the conference isn't as strong as it needs to be, so it's going to be tough to see. Who leads that conference? FSU. FSU. <laughs> yeah, wow! Shout out, shout out the Seminoles. FSU leads the conference right now. They're projected to be like a two seed. No, Yo, you know what's the crazy part about it? That coach is Len- Leonard Hamilton's yeah. name, right? Yeah, he's been there for a long time. He's been there for like twenty something years. His his last coaching job. Was coaching Michael Jordan with the Washington Wizards. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's how long he's been with Florida State. I mean, good. It's a good deal that they stuck with him because there was a lot of years where they weren't. You know, it's only been three to five years where FSU as a basketball team has really rose. Uh, you know, to the top of the ranks. So, uh, props for FSU for sticking with him. He actually has Coach Hamilton. Uh, has the fifth most wins out of all active coaches right yeah. now. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he does. So. He does a good job too. He runs a clean program. Kids don't really get in trouble on the basketball team. A lot of them graduate as well and become, you know, very very good young men in life. And um, yeah, he, he, he's done a great job. So we got the number one team in the country right now is Kansas. Yeah, isn't that something? It, 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 the new number one team is Kansas. Did Baylor lose? Is that why? I didn't That's see. Why, yeah, they, they lost to Kansas. Oh, they lost to Kansas. Yeah, okay. they lost to Kansas. Yeah, absolutely. So the number one team in the country is Kansas. Number two team is Baylor. Three is Gonzaga, and four is Dayton. Dayton, yeah. They got a guy on Dayton. Big white guy. He's a center. He wears a headband. He's got like he's a, a ponytail. Mix, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. he is very good. You're going to see him in, in March Madness uh, because I watched him last year. I, t- I took a couple Dayton games because I, I like the kid. And this kid, he's he's for real. I don't know if he'll make it to the league. He'll, he'll fit in somewhere, but, you know, he's the real deal. And isn't it something to see if Kansas, God forbid, let's, see, let's say they win this tournament, all that crap that they took – about all the allegations and everything they went through with Bill Self. It would honestly be an embarrassment if Kansas won, but I'm rooting for that. I, I don't disagree with you not one bit. So most likely the number one seeds are going to be Kansas, Baylor, Gonzaga. Gonzaga, and Dayton, as long as everything stays the same <laughs> Can you right imagine now. Dayton? That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me get into this. This part of the show is brought to you by ElCubanoSandwichShop.com. Use the promo code EAC and receive discounts on online pickups or delivery orders. Enjoy a cafe con leche or a natural pre-workout shot of Cuban coffee to start your day. Daily lunch specials and their steak sandwiches is next level. Once again, use the promo code EAC. That's ElCubanoSandwichShop.com or 954-906-5110. Remember, use the promo code EAC. Let's discuss 
the EAC headlines. Yes, uh, over the last couple days here in the sports world, uh, just grabbing a few things from from different sporting sites just for, for us to talk about it, give our, our perspective on things. Uh, so we're going to have our man, our sound man, Marcus Mack, uh, read a few headlines. He's going to pick them out of a hat. Uh, I'll grab one, Emilio. You'll speak on on behalf of what you think of what I say, and we'll we'll just go back and forth from there. So, Marcus, take it away, sir. All right, fellas. Uh, <clears throat> the first headline we're going to discuss today for the EAC headlines would be NFLPA agrees to send CBA to players for their votes. You so want to go first, can, Emilio? Yeah, I'll take this. I'll take this. I'll take this. I'll okay. take this one, and then you, and then you go off. So this one is basically about how the. Players Association representatives decided to pass this along to the other players, remaining players, for them to take a majority vote. So it passed the two thirds vote of the of the seventeen reps? fourteen or something like wow, that. Okay. Of the reps. So it was it was three over, out of all the out of all the reps, it was three over. So the I mean it was kind of even, but it was three over. So the, they have to send it. Okay. Now there was a lot of reactions to this today. There was Russell Wilson. There was Aaron Rodgers. We already know J.J. Watt said no. Hard no. We said Leonard Fournette said no. And we also know that Marquise Pouncey said no in every <laughs> F, sugar honey iced tea, fudge bomb, uh, mass hole, everything under the sun. Every language he, he used, everything. And yeah, driving in his car shirtless, screaming and that, at and the that, phone. And that resonates heavy because he, he put it out there. He told him, hey, listen, we, he got nothing but love for the young players. You know, the young players need help. Come to us because we're going to help you out. But let's not take a garbage deal now, you know, and set us up for 10 years of where, you know what we say, we shouldn't have did this. You know, it doesn't make sense. And Russell Wilson said the same thing on social media. Russell Wilson said, hey, listen, let's not satis- let's not be satisfactory today and sacrifice our future almost in a sense. Yeah, I-, I thought what Russell Wilson said was very polished. He pretty much said like the PG version of what Marquise Pouncey said. Uh, and I like I like that he said, let's not make a decision that's going to affect the next 10 years for today's satisfaction. And I think, I mean, that's the smart way to play it out. I mean, that's the logical thing to do. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this player vote goes. They just need a simple majority. But I like I said, so it's 17-14 and it, then it went to the players. So you can still see that there's 14 other players that are like, nah, we don't. No, 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 yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no. So there's only really three players that forced this decision to go to... No, to the players for them to vote on. Right. In my opinion, I still think the players are going to say no to this, and they're going to make them go back and get a better deal because, in all actuality, that's what they want. They don't want to tie up 10 years of uh, free labor talks if the money's not right. Yeah, so that's obviously what it's always about, money. But is that what it's about, If that 48.5%? Remember, the players get of the, of the share 47% currently? No, I think what new- it is is that the players just don't want to be locked up for 10 years. So okay. I think that the players were like, listen, if you want to do a 10-year deal, put an opt-out clause in it, maybe after four, maybe after five, or whatever, uh, okay. or six, or whatever. So that way we can come back to the drawing table because what a lot of people don't know is no one knows what's going to happen in 10 years. So you don't know what, how much money the owners are going to be in. You know, They're going to end up making in other avenues whether it be gambling or whatever comes up you understand what i'm saying so with that type of stuff the players want a little bit of you know what we can bounce and get out of it just in case yeah and i'm sure the owners wouldn't want a four or five year clause because even if things go excuse me smoothly after four or five years you know the players are going to say all right more money now pony up exactly and russell wilson did cite major league baseball and the nba because he's saying that they do right by the players which he means they get 50 50 Right. And that's what the players want. NFL players want 50-50. Not our, not our NFL owners with their small batch bourbon and cigar rooms. Nah, not no not ch- then. They, no ch- they want the heavier share. No chance. Give us, uh, give us headline number two, Marcus. All right. For the EAC headline number two, we're going into MLB. Yankees injuries or uh, sc- <clears throat> excuse me, I had to clear my throat. Yankees injuries already starting to take a toll. Go ahead. You take the lead on this. So, yeah, I did see, actually, uh, Marcus, the, the Yankees, Giancarlo Car- Stanton. Uh, what did he hear? He hurt his shoulder? Uh, some strain or something some like strain. that. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. Then this is, this is actually continuation from last year. Uh, we had a lot of injuries last year. We saw with Brett Gardner, Giancarlo Stanton. It Severino, didn't even feel like he, right? Severino's out this year, too. The whole year he's out. Oh, oh my, my God. So, it's like. That's crazy. That's it. It's just the Yankees haven't been able to start the season off correctly. 
And, and you know, and it's just it's sad because they're such a good team. Yeah, they're a really, really good team, and they and they produce really, really good baseball. And you know, what's funny is that all these injuries that happened last year, that's sort of what gave way to guys like Geo to be put in the starting lineup, and we saw him blow up. So, can you imagine what this team would be like if everyone oh, yeah, that's was, right, was Andujar, healthy? Anduhar got hurt last year too. That's yeah. how Geo fell. Yeah, but it's just you know, it sucks. You want to be ready for spring training going into opening day, and then you lose. You know. Severino and now you know what you call it. Uh, John Carlos Stan is and judges be, out right now. John Carlos Stan is not going to be ready for opening day neither. But it, it just sucks because they're such a good baseball team and they're just so enjoyable to watch. And when they're not fully healthy, you're you're almost being cheated. Luckily, last year was that wasn't the case because you had players that stepped up when these players got hurt. Well, everyone was cheated last year. Ah, uh, it's Astros. not. Come on, man! <laughs> you make such a big deal. The Astros didn't play everybody. Like there was uh-huh. still tons of baseball that went around it. You know, <laughs> I mean, even with them cheating, hey, they, you know, the Washington Nationals still beat them. So. Yeah, without Bryce Harper, that yeah, I mean, no, I still love that. Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper leaves and they win a title. They didn't even get anybody so, so, for him. They so, just so, got so rid so of his Bryce, contract. So Bryce Harper has to leave Philly, and that's how Philly's gonna win a title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's nuts. So what's uh what's on headline number three for us, uh, Marcus? Uh well we'll go we'll go to NBA. Uh NBA rookie Zion Williamson is matching, perhaps surpassing his massive height. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about this uh when we were talking about the Lakers Pelicans game. Um so just go just going off that, I mean Zion, of course, they allowed us to watch him last night against the LA Lakers. Uh this year he's averaging with the with the short amount of time he's played, I believe he's only played maybe twelve 14 games yeah. something like that i mean i think i think personally that 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 headline is too early to tell right it's way too early to tell i mean the hype can he live up to it i think he can live up to it right but it's still too early to tell yeah averaging over 23 points right now a game seven rebounds he's shooting this is what i find impressive 57 percent from the field i know a lot of zion is just dunking and getting close to the rim and and I taking mean, it to a, the rack he's efficient he is. He is efficient. So uh, it's it's actually good to see. And we talked a little bit last week or two weeks ago even uh, about the possibility of him continuing to ball out mm-hmm. and maybe catching John ja Moran if Ja slips. Uh, I don't think that should. For I, that I, rookie I, I, of the year. I don't think that's fair. John ja Moran play a whole season. You give him the rookie of the year. You don't give it to Zion. But back to the Zion point. That's almost like when you play a pickup game at like a, at a basketball court or whatever, and you take the the big sloppy guy on your team, and the big sloppy guy only has two moves, but yeah. no one can stop him. Like, is he a bad basketball player because of it? No, you can't stop him. So, he's a perfectionist. Yeah, he does what he he's does. He's efficient. Perfect. He's going nine for ten from the uh, from the from the paint. He's hitting his free throws. It is what it is. That's part of his game. Like, no doubt. And he's that. He's got the the power of Shaquille O'Neal, but the athleticism of like a, a Russell Westbrook. Yeah, he, he, it's it's he exciting just, to watch. He jumps through the roof. He dunks balls that are like alley ooped above the rim. He sends balls into like the fifth row and he blocks them. Yeah. Like I, me personally, I think. I think a LeBron James made a mistake. I think Zion should have been in Space Jam too, but he should have played on the Monstars. Yeah, he we, should have played on the Monstars <laughs> instead of playing with LeBron. You you know LeBron didn't want to hype up Dude, the younger. He still Zion, we talk about this old school versus new school. As he a matter of fact, to, I want credit for that. I want credit for that. If anybody <laughs> takes that for me, I want credit. The EAC, EAC show wants credit for that. Zion Williamson is a monster from the movie Space Jam. That's yeah, what he is. He's built like that. His he's built like, built that. like he's that. Built, he's built like that. He Just breaks like that. shoes when he jumps. Absolutely. Only Absolutely. monsters can do that. So headline number four, Marcus? Okay, headline number four is Duke plummets mm. to number three seed after ugly loss to Wake Forest. Yeah, this is a little... A little tough to watch. I mean, obviously, we just finished talking about uh, How many college do basketball. They have? they have five losses. That's all. When? It. When does that ever happen with Duke? Not this early in the season. No, they usually will drop a game in the in the tournament, the ACC tournament before the uh, before the March Madness, but never like this. They have, and not only they, do they have five losses, Emilio. Four out of their five losses have been to unranked opponents. That's alarming. They lost to okay. Stephen F. So, Austin. So, what you're te- so basically what you're telling me with that is you're telling me that Duke has a tendency of playing down to their opponents. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. And they, you know what? They, they've been like that for the past few years. A lot of people have said that. They're playing down. So basically when you see an opponent that's unranked and somebody you should be or step over or whatever it may be, they end up dropping the ball and they don't play to Duke potential. They make it a game. So, yeah, they lost to Stephen F. Austin. Mm-hmm. They I remember lost, that one. They lost to... Uh, NC State and Wake Forest, those are back-to-back games here. Both unranked teams. They lost to Louisville, who was ranked. And then I 
I forget that that fifth team that they lost to. You'll have to you know forgive me Is there, but. Was it Virginia? I don't no, remember. they play Virginia coming up here. I don't uh, remember. Yeah, they actually they are playing. Let me see here. So they play Virginia this Saturday, mm-hmm. which is their last opportunity for a Q1 win. Wow. They don't have a lot of opportunities because again, I just said the ACC is sort of having a down year. That's nuts. Yep, and the and the fifth loss they had was to unranked Clemson. So I mean, it's just very it's very weird year that they're having right now, and a lot of it I feel is due to the fact that they're still Duke though. Oh, they're still Duke. Duke, no matter what, and they it could be potentially their year. You know, Coach K likes to go in as almost like an underdog, but I think a lot of it has to do with the turnover of all their players. They get rookies, uh, excuse me, freshmen in, and then if they're good enough, they all three NBA. of them leave. So yeah. they, they're dealing with a new team. There's no chemistry. There's no continuity. I mean, at least he's not having a Roy Williams year. Yeah, God bless Royal Williams. He is having a year and a half. That's a I mean, disaster year he's having. I mean, you don't get rid of Royal Williams, all obviously, but you at least you know see where you're at as an organization, as, as a as a as a campus, and and find out if this is the direction you want to go for the the next X amount of years. Because how old is Roy Williams? He's old. He's up there. You he's, know? Yeah, he's up there. He's counting his. His lucky stars. Yeah, <laughs> it's I know, dark. I know, for, I know for a fact that comment he made about being uh, the next time we'll be good, I'll die or something like that's nonsense. That's yeah, nonsense. yeah, we don't want to hear any of that. But no, I think I think Duke writes the ship. I think they make a run in an NCAA tournament, and and we'll see how they do. We'll see how it goes. I do know that the number one seed is off the table for them, officially off the table. Yeah, I absolutely. read somewhere that the next couple of weeks they have to do work in order to get back up to a two seed. So it'll be interesting to see where they land. What we got for headline number five? All right. Last but not least, this is actually a funny story. 42-year-old Zambodi driver helps Carolina Hurricanes oh, win man. as an emergency goalie. I so saw for that. all for all you guys that don't know this story, I think his name is David Ayers. He's a 42-year-old Zamboni driver, and he does it for <laughs> the Maple Leafs organization, if I'm not mistaken. And they were playing the uh, Carolina Hurricanes, correct? Yep. And when they were playing the Carolina Hurricanes, the Carolina Hurricanes listed David Ayers as an emergency backup goalie if their goalies got hurt. Well, their starting goalie got hurt. Their backup came in the game. And all of a sudden, David Ayers is sitting in the in the crowd and his text messages start blowing up that he needs to get ready. That he might have to go in the game. David Ayers is like, yeah, okay, whatever. Right. You know, What's the chances What's two the chances? goalies get I'm hurt? I'm still going to go get ready or whatever, but still, what's the chances? Sure enough, goalie number two gets hurt. When goalie number two gets hurt, you got 42-year-old men who hasn't played a game in five <laughs> years who literally was just Zamboni in the ice before the game started. Had, having a beer. Yeah. <laughs> comes into the game in, this, in, the, in the second period, right? First two shots, goal, goal. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like he, he's, Get he's, this he's, geriatric yeah. out of here. Well, I'm going to lose this game. I'm going to lose this game. Third period comes. He's literally skating he's across the ice. Accurate. Giving <laughs> dap to all of his you know, Toronto Maple Leaf teammates and his Hurricane teammates, dapping them up. Sure enough, the Hurricanes put the game out of reach because it was a 6-3 victory for them. And then he ended up saving the next 8 out of 10 shots that were taken on him. He saved, won the game. He made $500 for the game. They went into the locker room, doused him with beer. It was great. But the thing is, he had a victory, and he was still wearing Maple Leaf uniform. He had Maple Leaf pants, and he had, like, a, a Maple Leaf affiliate uh, um, <laughs> um, goalie mask. So it's like, you won for the Carolina Hurricanes. You made the 500 bucks. This is amazing. You're the oldest guy, the second oldest guy to do this. But you did it against your team. <laughs> and now you have to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> you have to go back to work, and they're going to give you stick about, yo, what are you doing? You know, so that's like, that's our sugar honey iced tea moment. It was basically David Ayers, 42 year old Zamboni driver. I mean, it, literally, it was it was crazy. It yeah. was nuts. I mean, that's it's a pretty funny thing to think about how he was in the the visiting team's locker room, getting doused by like beer and all that, celebrating with guys. He has no idea who they are. No. And then the next day, he's probably walking around his neighborhood, and all these hardcore Toronto Maple Leafs fans are like, "Yo, what's come on? Who's side <laughs> you on?" Right they, had, now? They, had a, they had a lot of fun with it. It was very playful. He did the right thing. He said the right things. He was just excited. I mean, I was actually shocked that he only got 500 bucks. That's it? That's it. That's all they said. He got $500. If I'm him, I'm talking to my agent. If he's got an agent, I'm be like, listen. got to be a movie. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you got to get Dis- me a movie. Disney will figure out a way to turn it into a movie. Either and if that it's or- Marvel, Marvel will figure out a way to turn it into a damn show or something. I don't know. Either that or a 30 for 30 that they have on this guy. I mean, absolutely. You got to do something on him. I, know, I just, It was just an amazing story. Could you just imagine being him? You had a Panthers game and you're just sitting in the crowd and you're like, "Yeah, wait a minute, Cameron, we need you." What? 
Right. <laughs> I didn't even stretch. <laughs> the, qu- the question is, he got in at the second period, you say? He came in in period two. So the question is, after the second period, did he then drive the Zamboni oh, again? No, probably or did they not. Have a backup? No, 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 probably not. No, no, no. He drove. He drove. He came in period two because in period three is when the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs started to pull away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, not pro- uh, the Carolina Carolina Hurricanes started to pull away in the game because the the <laughs> the Carolina Hurricanes coach was like nervous. He he was like, oh my god, I'm gonna He's lose this game. <laughs> I'm gonna lose this game. And then sure enough, they started to pull away. So it was a nice cushion for them to have, and he made an, an, a lot of decent saves and right after the game ended the whole team for the carolina hurricanes just they just ran to him and like just gave him hugs and was like all cheering him and was all dapping him up they were all happy for him that's a good story yeah and how do you go back to civilian life now like he he's 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 felt the top he's felt the top of the of the mountain he's got put into a professional hockey game he was a semi-pro guy like what how many years ago and now he's at the top of the sport five five years five years ago five years ago so how do you go back to just being a zamboni guy it's got to be a a tough feeling he said he uh he didn't sleep that night like, he was just so amped it's, up. Yeah, of course. The endorphins had to be. I mean, he, yeah. he probably had, like, the adrenaline rush that he had was probably similar to drinking, like, five five-hour energy drinks all at once. Yeah. Or, like, having a case of Red Bull. Like, your heart is just pounding, like, going a million miles a minute. You know, he, I, I guarantee you, he he had a ball. Yeah, the crowd screaming. Yeah, I can only imagine, man. That's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Absolutely. Unless two goalies get hurt again, which, again, is just outrageous. Absolutely. This part of the show is brought to you by ElCubanoSandwichShop.com. Use the promo code EAC and receive discounts on online pickups or delivery orders. Enjoy a cafe con leche or the natural pre-workout shot of Cuban coffee to start your day. The daily lunch special and their steak sandwich is next level. Once again, use the promo code EAC. That's ElCubanoSandwichShop.com or 954-906-5110. Remember, use the promo code EAC. All right, so last part of our show here, uh, we're going to kick it off with our personal bread and butter of the yeah, show. Yeah, our bread and butter right here. The XFL, the Extra Fun League. Uh, we love talking about this because of how great a football, how quality of football it is. Um, but as far as the week four preview here, uh, again, we discussed this on Monday. Uh, but you can find these games on either ABC, Fox, FS1, ESPN. The first game on the week for slate is the LA. That's the game I'm covering. That's I'm the, covering yes. game one. That's right, Amelia. You're going to grab the first game here. That's the LA Wildcats at the New York Guardians. That's at 2 p.m. and that's on ABC. The line for that game is minus seven LA, and the over under is 40. Second game, that's which you're I'll, covering. Yep, I will be covering that game. That's the evening game at 5 p.m. Uh, and that's on Fox. That's between the Seattle Dragons, and that's at St. Louis Battlehawks. The spread for that game is a whopping minus 12 for C- uh, St. Louis, and the over-under is 39. Mm-hmm. Then on Saturday... I'm, on Sunday, I'm going to cover the se- the first game. Yes, on Sunday, you're going to grab the first game, which is the Battle of Texas. I'm jealous. I wanted to cover that game. That's between the Houston Roughnecks, and, and that's in Dallas versus the Renegades. That's at 4 p.m. on FS1. The line will fluctuate for that, make no mistake, but right now it's at minus 1 Houston, and the over-under is at 50. The second game on Sunday, which I will be covering, that's on ESPN2. That game is at 7 p.m. That's the night game. The D.C. Pretender, I mean Defenders at the Tampa Bay Vipers. And that game is Tampa minus one, and the over-under is 44. So I saw the week three uh, ratings for XFL. And while they dropped, they're still higher than any primetime NBA game that just happened recently. Really? So, Giannis versus the 76ers that just happened the other night? Yeah. Didn't even come close. Really? So, while people are still trying to take a knock on the XFL, in my opinion, as long as the XFL does not run into any financial problems, and I think Vince McMahon did his homework on that type of stuff, the XFL is not going anywhere. Yeah, he's at a second run at this. We talked before we came into the show today. The XFL is not going anywhere. I think they did a great job. I think they're going to see results. I think they're going to see players get chances to go into the NFL. And this is going to help their league because people are going to want to play in their league for that reason. Yeah, and do you think – we were talking about um, the NFL draft coming up and some of these quarterback prospects. Do you you see a world where at any point, let's say there's – 
the, the top two quarterbacks are taken off the board, right? And then that that th- three, the four, five uh, ranked quarterback in the draft. Let's say you're a team that needs a quarterback and also like a wide receiver, or a, you need a D end. Do you see a world, Emilio, where uh, a team will say, "Listen, yeah, we can get this third or fourth quarterback prospect with this pick, but how about we get the the wide receiver we're looking for, or the defense end we're looking for, and we'll just go pick up Jordan Tiamu or PJ Walker in the XFL?" Oh, so you're basically saying, if, do I see that instead of selecting like you know the fourth string quarterback, they rather go to the XFL and get that quarterback? or the fourth and, highest prospect? I think it's possible, but it then it will work the other way as well because if you have a quarterback that sits there and says, "You know what? I have a chance to go to the NFL." But I'm not getting ahead of Ben Roethlisberger or Aaron Rodgers or whatever it may be or his backup. That person might sit there and say, you know what? I'm going to go to the XFL and go ball over there and then force my way into the league. Yeah, because you almost, from, from a mentality standpoint of these quarterbacks in the XFL, they are trying everything in their power to get back to the NFL or to get to the NFL. Yeah. So you know once they're on an NFL team, they're not going to take it for granted. They're going to go that much harder versus a guy coming out of college that just thinks this is way the way it is. I'm now going to go to the NFL. So I almost want to make the argument that a team would do that. Yeah, Let course. me pick a, a Calvin Johnson-esque wide receiver, a stud wide receiver, and, and then get my quarterback from the XFL that you know I yeah, think is course. doing well. I, I, I don't disagree with you. And the XFL also allows these guys to get film on themselves. P.J. Walker is mm-hmm. a prime example. Jordan Tiamo is a prime example. Trey McBride is a prime example. Uh, Cam Phillips is a prime example. Yep. What's the running back's name from the Wildcats? The, 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 the uh, flip? Martez Carter. He's a prime example. Cameron Artis Payne. Cameron Artis Payne. These players are prime examples of... Players that are allowed to now get film that maybe they weren't able to see before because they were so down behind players. Right, right, on the depth so chart. So on the depth chart. They weren't getting any reps. They weren't getting any opportunities. So now you get film on these players. You get to see what they can do, and then you really bring them in and you let them compete, really compete, because you know what they can do. They've showed you what they can do on film. Yeah. So um, also we're going to get into the first game. Yes, the picks. So the picks are going to be... The first game is the New York Guardians versus the L.A. Wildcats, and the L.A. Wildcats are minus seven. I'm going to let you start off, Emilio, because you were the XFL guru of this past week. Who do you have? I have the Wildcats minus seven. I don't see the Guardians doing anything, regardless of whether if McGloin or Williams is their quarterback. Um, I did see that McGloin didn't even practice, so most <laughs> likely they're probably going to go with Williams. And, um, yeah, Josh, Josh Johnson did amazing. McBride, hopefully he can play. I hope he wasn't too concussed. And um, what, Trez, Trez, Mar- Martez Carter, uh, Martez Carter. Um, he just he's a he's a he's a baller. He's yeah, a just baller in my absolutely. Opinion. Yeah, three touchdowns last week. Ran hard and uh, just going off what you said. I like that three headed monster. That quarterback Johnson, the running back, the wide receiver McBride and Carter. They got a nice. We didn't little even thing say anything about Spruce. Yeah, we didn't they, even say anything they, about Spruce. Right, they had Spruce. That's in t- uh, two weeks ago. He's the one that scored two touchdowns. We didn't even say anything about Spruce. Yeah, so they, they're locked and loaded, and they, they're coming off a very confident win against uh, one of the top teams uh, in the XFL So you're riding with me with the minus seven? I'm riding with you with the minus seven. I don't see how they, they exploded last week, the Wildcats, and the fact that the New York Guardians in the last two games have scored a total of nine points. So we both on the LA Wildcats for game number one. So game number two, we got... The Seattle Dragons going to St. Louis and playing the St. Louis Battlehawks. That is the largest line in the XFL that has ever existed, and it's minus 12 St. Louis Battlehawks, who had 29,000 fans yep. down in Duluth. <laughs> like, seriously, they were down there. They were representing hard. They were cursing out uh, Stan oh, Kroenke. Yeah, Kroenke, the guy who uh, shipped off the Rams. Sucks. Kroenke yeah. <laughs> sucks. They still have bad feelings about them taking the Rams out of St. Louis. So in that game, I have the Seattle Dragons plus the points. Wow, okay. I think the Battle Hawks still win the game. Yeah. But I have the points. I'll take Seattle plus 12. It's a big number. And we talked last week, and that's the reason why I stayed away from the St. Louis Battle Hawks because of how big the number was. But I'm going to eat my words here from last week. I'm going to take the Battle Hawks with the with the spread minus 12. I actually like the Seattle Dragons. But their last two games were in Seattle. 
Now they got to travel for this game. We talked about the travel, uh, and 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 I think the crowd is gonna is gonna back their their team again. The St. Louis Battle. I think Seattle loses. I just don't think they lose by thirteen. I, I can respect that, and I could be wrong, but I'm gonna based off of what I did last week. I gotta go with the St. Louis Battle Hawks because I truly think low key that they're the best team in the XFL. I mean, Matt Jones, Jordan Tiamu, they they're really good players. I mean, they, they really do their thing. I saw I saw one portion where Matt Jones was trying to get in a game, and the coach was, like, telling him, yo, get back over there, man. Let the coach coach. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because he was feeling himself. He was really having a good game. The special team for St. Louis was amazing. Like I said, yep. the 58-yard bomb that, you know, the, the their kicker hit. Rusilio, I think that's how you say his name. I'm not 100% sure. I apologize. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it, it, they, they balled out, and they and they got that W. And the, uh, and the uh, first kickoff return first in kickoff XFL return history. In XFL, XFL history, yeah. Belongs to the Battle Hawks. So, and, and, you know, they only lost. Their 2-1, and one, their only loss came from the Houston Roughnecks. They lost by four in Houston. So I mean I truly think that they're that they're the best team in the XFL. So I gotta I gotta go with the. So just there. a reminder on IG, I have game one and Cameron has game two. We're split on these two games for Saturday. So let's get to the Sunday slate. Sunday slate. That's the battle. The first game uh, is the battle for Texas Dallas Renegades and the Houston Roughnecks. The game is in Dallas. The spread is. Houston minus one. I am not going against the Houston Roughnecks. I, I will take like the Houston Roughnecks. P.J. Walker, Cam Phillips, and them boys. June Jones is the offensive coordinator and the head coach. I am going with the Houston Roughnecks and Mr. XFL, Mr. Super Excitement, Mr. I Can Do All That and a Bag of trips, uh, Tricks. Uh, without question, P.J. Walker. Okay, and I respect that. And that's this is going to hate me to do it because you know how much I love P.J. Walker and everything they got going on there. But I got to go opposite of you. I'm taking Dallas plus one. You're only taking them because of Stoops. I'm taking them because because of, of the combination Stoops and Landry. They they've done this a lot, and they're two and one. Another two and one team. Their only loss came to St. Louis, who I just said I think is the best team in the XFL. Uh, also, not only that, but I didn't really like what I saw out of the Roughnecks defense last week. In but that Tampa. was because they were playing the Vipers, who the Vipers have a really really good offense. They just can't get into the end zone. Right. So. They let him in the end zone a few times. So I'm not saying that, that they don't have a good defense. I'm saying with the collection of how well the Dallas Renegades are playing, the fact that it's in Dallas, and the fact that I didn't like what I saw out of their defense last week, albeit I know Tampa's got a, a, an explosive offense uh, that they finally showed in week three, I'm going ahead and I'm taking the point, the one point, and uh, the win, uh, Dallas Renegades. So we're split on that game. So now you got the last game, which is the D.C. Defenders. They're at home against the Tampa Bay Vipers. And that's the game that you're going to cover. And that's 7 o'clock on ESPN2, you said. That's right. And I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Vipers. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Vipers. You can't go 0-4. Yeah. (laughs) You can't go 0-4. Your fan base needs more than that. The players on the team deserve more than that. I mean, you gotta you gotta get at least one on the board, guys. You guys were like one of the favorites to win the whole thing in the beginning of the season. You gotta get. Let's get this donut, this bagel. Let's get this love off the board and let's get you on the winning side of things i think the tampa bay vipers win absolutely i'm with you i'm taking tampa bay also plus uh what is that i think it's two and a half isn't it yeah it's plus no it's actually tampa minus one Oh, it dropped? Yeah, that's right. It, 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 well, it was 10 minus 1. We'll have to check to see if it jumped at all. But I guess uh, Vegas liked what they saw out of Tampa last week, how they almost took out top-ranked Houston Roughnecks and how well they looked. The only thing I didn't looking. like, and I mean, it's okay because Tyler Cornelius did play a decent game. He only had he only threw one bad interception. Uh, but Quentin Flowers was listed as uh, out for personal reasons. Yeah, it's weird. I did see that as well. He was listed as out for personal reasons, and I'm okay with the way they've been using the quarterbacks because they're just going with whoever's hot. They're riding with that hand for the time being. But, I mean, other than the fact that Quentin, uh, Tyler Cornelius threw a really bad interception, he played a decent game. He kept the game. He kept the, the team in the game, and they were playing the number one team in the XFL with P.J. Walker and the Houston Roughnecks. I just feel like Cardell Jones had a really bad game, mm-hmm. and he probably still has that game in the back of his mind. I don't think he's going to play as bad. I just think he's not going to have that great of a game. So you game. think it's going to take a while to wash that one off? Because yeah. it was a stinky, stinky it was game. A, yeah, it was a horrible game. I mean, um, he got pulled. Yeah. He got pulled. I mean, yeah, at that point, I mean, you can't – there's no coming back from 30 point uh, on the road, but he needed to get pulled before he threw a fifth interception. It was looking very ugly at the end of that one last week in L.A. Um, but as far as this game, 
Uh, I, I I think you said Taylor Cornelius. I mean, he's got wheels also. We know Quentin Flowers is a running quarterback. Um, but Cornelius had a, a touchdown on the ground last week. So I think he, he's a quietly a dual-threat quarterback. I think he has enough what it takes. I think – uh, we had Wayne and Wayne Caton uh, a couple of days ago talking about their offensive line. They have two good running backs. That I don't run know behind. how he saw that. Yeah, I, I guess he's. I, do, <laughs> I, I promise you, XFL. I watch XFL, but I'm not watching the offensive lineman. The only offensive lineman I knew was the offensive lineman from the New York Guardians because he was get, almost about to get thrown out of the game yeah. for all the flags and unnecessary roughing. That's the only person I know from an offensive lineman standpoint. The only one I know is Jordan McRae, and that's because he played for UCF. That's the only uh, you Homer. That's the only man. old lineman I know. Damn Homer, yo. <laughs> damn Homer. I gotta so, show love. So Cam and I agree on. This game. We agree on Tampa, and we agree on L.A., and we're Split on the indifferent team. on the St. Louis and the Dallas game. So, so I'm just going to go 4-0 again. Yeah, we'll see about that. All, all I know is that that game that I'm covering on Sunday, I'm excited for that, to watch the D.C. Pretenders. I, I They they are... You keep calling them that, yo. I'm not calling <laughs> them that yet. Their opponents through the first three weeks are a combined 3-6. and six, And now they're about to go against an 0-3 team. So The best 0-3 team. The best 0-3 team that because these guys... They, lead, they lead the league in offensive and defensive statistics. It's oh crazy. God, yeah. And they don't have a win. You just got to get the dub up there. And the players need to get... You said how much money it is... Per win when you know, they get a win, you know what? Hundred thousand. You know what would be great if I could figure out or find out how much would it be if you took the Tampa Bay Vipers to win every game from now until the championship. I don't know. At least our site doesn't have that, but we can see what their what their uh, yeah what, what their the championship, the championship uh, was. Yeah. yeah, but I'm talking about like every regular season game right now. Yeah, if you took them right now where they're zero and three to to run the table and win every game. Including the championship game? Including the championship game. Uh, I would say at minimum plus fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred dollars. At minimum. That's at minimum. crazy. That's nuts. But we've been enjoying the XFL. We really have been. Uh, I think it's a league that is not going anywhere. I think people need to eat, they need to jump on the train now before the train leaves them because it's going to be too late. Stop bad, bad mouthing. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of bandwagon fans, you know. And it's not like. See, with this XFL, is only eight teams. If the team is not in your region, you can root for whoever you want. Right. It's easy to follow it because, like you said, there's only eight teams. If you're not – if you you don't have a team that's in your direct region, we obviously live in South Florida. That's where we're doing the show from. Um, so I guess you can call us Tampa Bay Vipers fans, even though I love the, the St. Louis Battlehawks. Um, but – you can just pull, you know, if you want to, if you're in, you know, Iowa or you know, North Dakota or Utah, this league, this, just pick out of a hat. Pick all, league, put all the teams in the hat. Pick one root, out. This league makes me root more for players than teams. Yeah, and it's built like that yeah, because you want to see these guys go to the next level. Exactly. It's, it's, it's making me root for players to get to that next level besides them rooting for a specific team. You understand? Because yeah. even though we are in South Florida – I don't root for the Tampa Bay Rays, like you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. I, that, that, I don't. I barely root for the Miami Marlins, like you not, know. Not much so, to root for. Yeah, with not much root, to, root for. So like in this league, you, you technically root for players to get to that next level, to see them succeed, provide for their families, get that lifelong dream of playing in the NFL. And this league allows them to do that and have that platform to do that. Absolutely. So, again, remember uh, to follow us live on IG. Not live, but uh, check our stories from time to time. We're going to be recapping uh, from half to half. Born, or excuse me, Emilio has the early game on Saturday and, and the, the early, early game, game on, on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, without question. And, guys, do me a favor. This is going to conclude episode uh, is eight. It eight, right? Yeah, it's going to conclude episode eight. Make sure you check out episode nine. Please subscribe, like, comment, hit the notification button on YouTube. We're on all podcast platforms. Hit the button on that, subscribe on that, and get notifications when our next episodes are up. Once again, we're going to try this uh, Twitch live streaming thing, see how that works. Yeah, and we want to hear from you. Yeah, we want to hear from you guys. We want to hear the feedback because we want to know if we're doing a good job. And if we're not, criticize us, and we'll, we'll accept the criticism, and we'll try to get better every day. Marcus Mack, I appreciate you. Joey Benetti, I appreciate you. EJ, I know you're not here, but I love you, Cam. Good job. We'll see you episode nine. Appreciate it, guys. Sugar Honey Ice Tea. It's the EAC Show.